Howdy guys, so today we're going to make, um, uh, what's your name? Oh yeah, sofas. We're going to make them from scratch and now, um, there's two ways to go in here. Traditionally, as far as I know, um, we only need this corn meal or uh, corn flour, if you prefer, which I, I really don't know. I think the normal way to go is corn meal. So, well, we need the cornmeal and we need water. Now, I'm doing something that I saw yesterday, actually. Uh, there's another way, I think this is a little bit less common, which requires, um, well, normal flour, you know, uh, wheat flour. And a little bit of salt, obviously the water, the cornmeal, and oil. And now, the thing here is that I'm going to uh, do this in an experimental way because you know I like to improvise for those that know me, for those that don't well, I love improvising so we're going to add, uh, well depending on the amount that you want uh, we may add as much as we want to make but what I'm going to do here is only two cups of um, cornmeal so just a moment now the amounts here, uh, they are very dependent on the way that you like them. I normally don't suggest using salt, but then again, uh, uh, we're experimenting here. So now, what we're going to do here is that we are going to make um, the mass again from scratch. So. This is the way we're gonna go. Oh my god, I don't know how much oil left to add here. Uh, I guess we're going to go with this amount. And remember, we're going to use water as well. So, obviously, wash your hands before. Just, you know, mix it a little bit. Because then again, we're going to add the water, so it shouldn't matter. Give me just a little moment. We're not going to add all the water at the same uh, moment. We're going to be adding it slowly. Uh, well, we also mix it by hand, okay? So, um, oh yeah, the water it has to be a little bit hot. Um, I think it doesn't really matter, but this is the way my mom taught me, so this is the way I'm showing you just keep adding a little bit of water while you also keep mixing it what we want is a mass that doesn't stick in your hands like this one does and something that remains together more than this one does okay so get ready you're about to make your abuela proud and if you then have an abuela, you're going to make me proud. After a little bit more of water, you can see that this is almost no longer sticking in my hands. However, it's not yet fully incorporated. I may have to use my two hands, so I will have to maybe stop the video for a little moment in here. Unless I find a way to, well, you know. The thing here is that you have to keep on going, okay? Remember, it doesn't have to stick in your hands. This part is not ready yet, however, this one is about to. So I added a little bit more of oil. Um, then again, this is not the exact recipe and I think there's many spin-offs on how to make tortillas. Uh, which is basically what we're doing. I mean, a sope is basically a, a thick tortilla um, with the borders um, pinched. That's why in some places of Mexico they call them uh, pellizcadas, I think, which literally means pinched. I am about to say something that sounds nastier than it should, but go, uh, go ahead and play with your two hands in order to get a little bit more of a perfect mass thing now what we're going to do is we're going to take a little piece we're going to form it into a little ball 
you see this means that it's not well done yet so keep on going you have to make sure that um, everything mixes together and give me just a second now uh, I made a slightly smaller ball by cutting that one in half what we're going to do is normally if you were a normal Mexican which unfortunately uh, it seems I am not you will have one of those metal presses uh, it's a circle uh, it has uh, a flat part on top and you put the mass in there and you just press it and there you go you have your tortilla however uh, it seems that I am a little bit um, not normal so what I'll do is I'm just gonna crush this one with this little plate now as you can see there's plastic both in top and below so we're gonna press it down first I am going to show you how to make a tortilla then I'm going to show you how to make a sope which is almost the same again okay now that we have pressed it a little bit again uh, normally this should be a circle oh my god I think I need to get myself one of these presses anyways there's no need for that to be a circle don't let anyone tell you how to make your tortillas if you want to make square tortillas you're gonna be a little bit weird but hey whatever goes your way huh just keep on pressing it make sure that it's distributed and there we go we have a, a oh my god it's a, not so flat well the idea is for you to get it flat and not to break it like I just did but this is kind of the idea for a tortilla now we go in here I apologize if it's not so clean but oh my god that's a failure there <laughs> Oh shoot, well you just pinch it together and that's it, I mean it's mass, it's going to heat and, and form a tortilla and that's it, and then you leave it a little bit of time, you you make sure that it's not so hot, oh my god, you make sure it's hotter if it wasn't any hot, and again I, I apologize if it's not so clean, I mean it's not really dirty, you don't have to worry too much about it, but make sure to be cleaner. At least this one is cleaner. Uh, that's pretty sure. Um, so once it's ready on the other side, you flip it. Put your hand. Show your abuela that you know how to flip tortillas. Okay, that's one ugly tortilla. If it was a child, her father wouldn't love it. That's a really cool. Hasa, I love you, tortilla. I do, I love you. Now, while my tortilla heats up, and hopefully I don't forget, it's over there in the pan grill, uh, whatever that thing is called, um, we make a sope. And I'll teach you how. Again, uh, the sopes are more my thing, uh, tortillas as you can see they are not my specialty again this is the first time I add um, wheat flour to my tortillas uh, so I'm just noticing that it's cooking a little bit weirder I mean it's getting fluffier and tortillas are not supposed to be that fluffy not that much at least so anyhow, let's go to the sope preparation process. Okay, so this one, you're going to make sure that you flatten it, but not as much as a tortilla, okay? You're going to want to fold correctly your plastic, because otherwise it's going to be with mine. And that's one weird looking sope. Anyways, this is experimental cooking, so... Okay, so now the reason why it's cooking. Okay, so sorry, I had to break the video. Um, more issues in there, and I also noticed that I did something wrong. Okay, so basically, like I showed you, we're gonna press here. 
And we have a fluffier version of a tortilla. This one is ultra thick. Maybe it doesn't need to be that thick. Let's see. Just a little bit. You don't want to flatten this one. Mainly because, well again, this is not a, a tortilla, okay? So, what we're going to do after we flat this one, we're going to drop it into the fire. Make sure that the temperature is high enough. <sighs> Basically, what we're going to do is, once this is ready, we're going to flip it and we're going to start pinching. That's when we'll make the pellizcada part. Uh, again, I don't know why they call it. I mean, it's obvious why they call it that way, but it's an ugly name. Sope sounds way better. Oh, come on, focus. There we go. Ah, oh, that's cute. You can see how old this pan is. So we just have to wait in here. I think I'm gonna cut until I actually flip it. So once you feel it's a little bit ready here, what we're going to do is... Oh, I overcooked it. No problem, no problem. We can still pinch it. Just lower your temperature, because otherwise you'll not get it done. Oh my god. So today we learned a very important thing, which is not adding um, wheat flour to this mix. Uh, there we go. A little bit more, shall we? As you can see, I already pinched this one. It now has the shape of a sope. Now, the only problem is that the consistency is too breaky. I'll try making another one this way. Hopefully, it was my mistake and it was because I overcooked it. But I actually think uh, it's not a very good idea to mix uh, wheat flour in here. Okay, so maybe it turns out that I actually overcooked that side because this one looks a little bit cuter. Um, a little bit just. No, do not shame me. <laughs> uh, sorry. It's just that I used that thing to take the other one out because I forgot it was there and it was already hot enough. So, yeah. <clears throat> that one actually burnt. Um, so, yeah, well, this is kind of the idea. Hope you guys actually do it better than I do. <laughs> But it's not bad to be the first time I add wheat flour. Next time I'll make sure not to add it. Uh, I see that, well at least to me, it's not a very good idea because again, it heats up way too fast. Um, wheat flour is more for like bread. And tortilla is not bread, it's different. It's an alternative. By the way, I forgot to uh, mention if you feel that, that your mass is a little bit breaky and runny and whatever just make sure to heat it up a little bit more with your hands uh, keep oh my god how do you say that keep playing with your hands and with the mass obviously in order to heat it up a little bit and that way your mass is going to look cute and not breaky and runny like the first one I made and yes, ugly thing, I'm talking about you. Not as much about you. Oh, also, yeah, this, um, as you notice, I didn't even use that much wheat flour. However, this one, I mean, well, both do smell a lot like bread. And they're not supposed to smell like that. And they're also not supposed to look like this. If my camera wants to focus. Oh, yeah, there we go. It's not supposed to look like this. I would consider this to be almost a failure. But you know, at the end of the day, food is food, so it's not such a failure. Just make sure to not hit it that much when you turn it around. And by the way, for those that think that it's a little bit too savage to make these things, pinching it with your hands like if it was nothing, you may grab a little bit of water, just a little bit, moisten your hands. Not that much. Just a little bit. There we go. And that way you can touch the mass without burning yourself that much. Now, I just wish to know why this one is hitting so much. I guess it, uh, I don't know. It wasn't even long there and it's already too hot. 
experimenting in, in many ways to make sure that I find the correct way to make them for those that are not very used to being in the kitchen or that don't like grabbing Mexican food in the middle of the fire so this time what I did is I actually put my fingers on my both hands into the water make sure not to add too much water to your fingers cause I mean not to get your your fingers too wet cause otherwise you'll make the mask go a little bit runny again um, I was also gonna say something else ah uh, yeah uh, alternatively something that you can do is you can actually take this off the fire with the help of um, a spatula yeah, yeah that's English name yeah anyways uh, you may take it from the fire, pinch it, and get it back on the fire. It's not the best idea because it has to cook while you're pinching it. Otherwise, um, as you can notice, the edges can go down. Those were done on the fire, those outside of the fire. Yeah. Reach this far and your sopes actually look like this one. Then I salute you. You have learned how to make sopes with a little bit of wheat flour and some corn flour cornmeal I, I, I mean or is it the same? anyways if you are actually a native English speaker or if you know the actual difference between corn flour and cornmeal do make sure to comment them so that I can know not so burnt I wonder why. Now I wish someone could record just as I pinch it, but basically what you want is to get that shape, the shape of a volcano. You don't want to make a bowl, like I don't know why this one became a bowl, I, I'm pretty sure I pinched it correctly. Anyways, you want to make a volcano, not a bowl, because otherwise this one, when the heat starts reaching it, it will do this, and you don't want to do that. You want a volcano so that your beans can be in there and, uh, you know, retain in there. So when you bite it, it doesn't go everywhere. So the next part is actually putting the, the beans on your newly created surface. There you go. You see? And over that, you will add the cream and the cheese. With cheese, um, um, queso fresco, queso canasto, canasto, yeah. It's a canasto, I don't know how you guys call it. Um, uh, it looks like, oh Jesus, it's so hard. Uh, I don't know, it looks like panela. I mean, you can always Google it, don't you? Um, <laughs> so, frijoles, that's pretty normal, I guess. Beans are very standard food. Basically, you just add the beans, the water, and you start mashing while obviously heating it obviously you need to cook uh, the beans before mashing them because otherwise you're not gonna be able because they are like um, seeds yeah so well anyways so that's pretty much how you make sopes remember add the cream in here uh, if you want uh, uh, to add salsa uh, you can always add the salsa I'll, I'll show you eventually how to make salsa um, if you want it to be mm, spicy or or not that much well I'll, I'll make sure to add different levels of salsa to make sure that it's good for all audiences so anyways that's pretty much how you make this I hope I didn't make your eyes burn as much this is the saddest attempt I've ever seen in my life <sighs> but anyways I hope you guys enjoy it do make sure to leave uh, um, images and videos on how you did it. Oh, by the way, I was going to give you a useless piece of information. So remember when I had, I mean, I scratched the, the burnt part of the mass from the comal or pan or grill or whatever that is in English. So legend has it that the Aztecs used to um, mix these burnt parts with water and they will make a paste in order to wash their teeth. Amazing, huh?
decided it's a better idea to show you what type of cheese. Again, it's, uh, this is sasadero. It looks like panela, in my opinion. I, I mean, no, sorry, it's pan... Uh, oh my god, I forgot the name. Canasto, canasto, yeah. And uh, Well, you're obviously gonna shred it in order for it to look like this. And once you shred it, you're obviously going to add first the cream and then the cheese. Like I'm gonna show you right now. So, anyways, this is how your final product is gonna end up looking like. Oh my god, that one is spilling the cream. Anyways, uh, oh, this is the broken one. I thought it was that one. Anyways, um, yeah, so this is how it will look. Amazing, huh? So, this is pretty much one of the few samples of Mexican fast food. Again, if you're gonna follow the recipe, make sure to make it better than I did and share your result, please. I wanna see it. And don't you forget to add the salsa to make a better, uh, to give it a better flavor and to make sure that you are enjoying the best of Mexican food.